Hello friends and happy Halloween. Mina's red dress from the 1992 Bram Stoker's Dracula has lived in my brain rent free for years now. So I thought it was finally time to make this dream dress of mine. Before we get started, I just wanna hear what you guys would be interested in seeing me make for Halloween next year. So leave a comment below with what Halloween spooky time gown you would like to see me make. All right, let's go back in time and make some frilly Victorian underwear. All right, let's make some frilly underwear. I will be making a chemise and some bloomers or like split drawers, but I don't think I'm actually going to make the drawers split. I think I'm just gonna make them up like regular because I never end up using the like split crotch feature as weird as that is to say. That's what we're gonna do. I have this beautiful cotton lawn that I got from online fabric store. I will link it below, but this is gonna be basically what I use for both pieces. And then I also have a bunch of this lace that I have been collecting over the few, I don't know, every time I go to Joey and I feel like I just get a new spool of lace. So here we are. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And we're gonna make these a little frilly, a little cute, but obviously in black because this is for me. This will go under the corset as well as like under the bustle, the petty bustle, which we'll be making after this. So let's get started. For the chemise, I'm using Folkwear Pattern 226. This is not a Victorian chemise, it's more of a slip dress, but I think it will work well for this project. I cut my cotton lawn pieces with my shiny laser engraved scissors from Femore Cutlery, and then I overlocked the edges of my pieces. This isn't historically accurate, but I only have 25 sewing days to make this entire costume. So modern technology is my friend. After serging the edges, I pressed my fabric and then it was time to assemble the pieces. I stitched each panel together with a half an inch seam allowance, leaving the back panel completely open for now. Once my seams were sewn up, I pressed them open so they would lay flat against my body. I'm gonna sew the placards, which are the little thing in the back that helps support the buttons. I have this black strip here. I just serged the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to line this up and pin it this way. Once it's sewn, I'm going to fold it this way, press it, and then fold it again under. And then I will have like a raw edge here, this raw edge right here, and this will get folded and pressed, and then I will sew all of that down. Okay, so I have folded over the hem of the bottom as well as the, um, the like spaghetti strap area at the top, so you can see in here. And I'm gonna stitch this down, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of this like ruffled trim. I'll show you when I go do that. This is what the placard looks like. If you can see here, it's just stitched there. And then this top one is folded over. Eva is knocking on the door. Do you wanna see what that means? Here we go. So my door, like she puts, she boops it with her nose. And then there she is. Hi, you wanna be in the studio? Come on. Now I just have to stitch the lace at the neckline sew up the back of the dress from the placket down to the hem and add buttonholes and buttons. For the bloomies <laughs> or the split drawers, I am using Laughing Moon Pattern 100. This pattern comes with a corset, chemise, and split drawers. I started exactly how I started with my chemise, where I cut my pieces, overlocked all of the edges, and then pressed everything flat so that would be nice, crisp, and clean for me to work with. Using the guide on the pattern, I marked the tuck placement. I have an entire video on tucks and pin tucks, so I'm going to just briefly go over them here, and if you want a deeper dive, you can check that out in the description. Once my tucks were marked, I folded and pressed my fabric on the line, and then stitched about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I did this for every tuck on both leg pieces. Then I stitched each leg together, right side together, and stitched the crotch seam by putting one leg inside the other, leaving an eight inch opening to get them on and off. From there, I pressed the edges of the seam opening and stitched them down. 
Finally, for the first of four waistbands that will be in this video, I pressed my band in half, pressed one of the sides in by half an inch, and then pinned the band to the legs, gathering down the fabric as I went. Then I folded the side over and I just top stitched the other side down and hand stitched a hook and eye in the back and I have a waistband. Next up is the corset. I do already have an 1850s corded corset as well as an 1890s corset that I made last year for my Nadja costume, but I don't have an 1880s corset and I really wanted to make a new corset for this costume. So let's jump in. I have printed my pattern. I am using the red threaded corset pattern. This is from the 1870s to 1890s. I have made, I think, four of their patterns before and I really like their patterns. I really like basically everything red threaded does, so much so that I actually bought a kit this time. What I'll be doing is I will be making a mock-up with this out of duck canvas and I'm going to use all of the boning. The one weird thing about this corset is that it has to have a pretty low back because the dress in general, like the front of it goes pretty low as well as the back. It goes low in a V shape. Um, the back goes really low so I am gonna have to modify it a bit which means my boning isn't gonna fit perfectly, but that's okay. I can adjust those when we reach that bridge in the final form. Today or right now, my goal is to just get the pattern cut out, the duck canvas cut out, sew it all up, and then also get a mock-up going and see how it fits and make the adjustments that I need to make, especially the lowness of the back, which is gonna be kind of weird and finicky. I'm excited, this will be fun, so let's get started. Okay. I cut my duck canvas and just looking at these pieces flat on my table, this corset looks like it's gonna be pretty large on me. So I'm gonna do two phases of this mock-up. The first is going to be just sewing the panels of the duck canvas and getting kind of a fitted garment like I would with like a bodice or something. And then once I get that, I can add all of the boning in and kind of see where I am at. Once the boning is in, I can do another fitting, make sure it kind of feels comfy and like it doesn't actually physically hurt to wear. And then I will take it apart and make my adjustments and we will start the actual construction process on our corset. So I will see you in the first corset mock-up fitting. Editing Casey here, just realizing that the audio did not record for this clip. So I'll just sum it up. The corset was a little too big. I took it in in the bust as well as on the side and down the center front. I didn't end up making another mock-up with boning because I was able to see what I needed to see from this fitting. So once I made the adjustments, now uh, let's make a corset. Oh, and the back seemed to be low enough in my opinion, so I just left it. Good morning, friends. It is 8.30 and um, I think I'm gonna attempt to make this entire corset today. I have to start by just making some adjustments to my paper pattern pieces, and then I can start cutting out fabric, flat lining, boning, yada, yada, yada. But I'm, I'm gonna try. It's like, it's been a while since I've tried to make an entire corset in a day, and knowing now that like all of the adjustments I need to make, mock-up phase is over, I think I'm ready to rock and roll. So I guess let's get started. Okay, so I just wanted to show you really quick what this red threaded pattern kit comes with because it's really cool and I don't know, I haven't really seen anyone actually like show the kits and the stuff inside them. All right, so first we've got Cotil. It is unwashed. There's three quarters of a yard is what this says over here. So here is the Cotil. And then I have a busk. This goes in the front some boning and there's quite a bit of boning actually. So that's awesome. There's both straight bones and spiral. Uh, most of you that have seen my videos before, I normally use uh, the German synthetic whalebone, but I'm excited to go back to steel just, you know, because 
that's what's included in here. There is boning channels. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, <laughs> boning uh, channels, I believe. Yeah, that's what that looks like. So this is what I'll sew on the inside. I was doing this black grow green ribbon as the, um, for the mock-up and that would look really great with the red corset, but since it's gonna be on the inside, I it's fine, whatever. And then lacing. I prefer a different kind of lacing, so I might save this um, and use it for something else I prefer I'll have to show you later in the video or something but there's like a like a shoe string type lacing it's a little it's got like a little bit of elasticity to it but I like it better but I still might use this just for a little bit or I'll save it for another one and then grommets um, I don't remember what color grommets this came with probably silver it'll still look fine even if I do the like red well uh, yeah, grommets. So basically it comes with all the hardware. The best part of this is honestly that this is all pre-cut and capped. So if you don't have to adjust the length of your corset, you are solid and gold like on this front, which is really helpful. Yeah, so I guess let's get into actually making this corset. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut out my pattern there on this coattail. So let's get to it. So this is what I mean by the shoestring looking lace. I just prefer this, but um, satin does work. It's not that it doesn't work, like clearly Red Threaded put it in their pattern kit because they, they stand by it. I just um, prefer this. So I'm, I think I might just order another black one to match this corset better, but that's a problem for future Casey. Once I cut my pieces out on the coattail, I placed each piece on my silk taffeta. This is Cardinal from Silk Baron. You will be getting very familiar with this fabric as it's the main fabric I'll be using for this gown. Flat lining basically means combining two layers of fabric so they work as one layer. So I'm going to pin my coattail to my taffeta all around the edge. Then I'm going to sloppily cut out the taffeta just so that the piece is on its own. Now I can baste around the entire piece about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the coattail. Then I press my fabric and trim the taffeta so it lines up with the coattail without actually cutting into the coattail. I don't plan on lining this corset, so I'm serging the edges of each panel so that they will be cleanly finished on the inside. To mark the boning placement, I'm using my pattern transfer paper and my pattern transfer wheel. If the fabric is thin enough, this can also be done with a light box and any fabric marking tool that disappears. Now for the grommets, which I don't hate doing anymore because I have the proper tools to do them. I start by marking the grommet placement with my Pilot Friction pen. These pens are honestly a game changer for sewing and you will see me use them quite a bit in this video, so I've linked them in the description. Using my hole punch and then my awl, I'm going to create a hole large enough for my grommet to fit into. Then I will place the flat half of the grommet, the one that is kind of like a very thin washer, and I will place the entire thing under my grommet press, apply force, and now I have a grommet. Before I can sew my panels together, I need to add the boning channels to go down the middle of the pieces. To do this, I pin my channel tape on my marked corset piece. Then I stitch it down on each side of the channel tape, making sure that I leave enough room in the middle for the boning. To apply the busk, I'm going to start with the side that has the hooks. First, I'm going to mark half an inch away from the front on the front pattern interfacing piece. Then I can line the busk up to that marking and mark where the openings for the hooks need to go. I'm going to sew that piece to the right center front piece, place the busk in between the two pieces of fabric, and then sew it down. To do the opposite side of the busk, I'm going to use the eye of the hook to mark the placement of the bar pieces. This pattern actually includes a little placket for behind the busk, so I just fold that back while I'm marking my placement. Using my awl, I puncture the fabric and place the busk in the holes. I pin along the side of the busk and then sew it down with the placket flap on the back of the busk and the pretty corset fabric on the front. Starting at the front, I pin and sew each panel to the one before it and press my seams open as I go. For the curved seams, I make sure to use my pressing ham. Then I stitch the seams down about a quarter of an inch away from the edge to create the boning channel.
The final step is binding. In order to make matching bias tape, I measure the top and bottom of my corset. Then I mark and cut four strips of silk taffeta on the bias based off of my measurements. Now I can pin the bias tape to the edges of my corset. I sew it down with my zipper foot on my machine so that I'm more careful around the boning. Then I press the bias tape away from the corset and fold it over the back, folding the raw edge in on itself I prefer to hand stitch this down mostly because when I stitch in the ditch it just never looks as good or as clean as when I hand stitch it down. I was successful in sewing this entire corset in a day. I thought about adding some embroidered flossing and I really wanted to add a bat, but I couldn't really figure out how to make it work and also make it like functional flossing. So I opted out of that in the long run, but it still would be kind of cool to have little bats embroidered on this corset, maybe someday in my future with all this spare time that I have. The final undergarment is the petty bustle, which is going to hold up the weight of the skirts and create this nice little bustle shape in the back. All right, it's time to start the final undergarment or like foundational garment because there is one skirt that is an underskirt that goes underneath the asymmetrical overskirt. The garment that I'm gonna be making now is called a petty bustle. All of the research that I did on this project kind of led me to this undergarment and basically, I found this reference photo and that sealed the deal for me. I was originally going to make a lobster tail bustle, but that kind of looked like overkill and I really like the softness of this garment. So we're gonna make what's called a petty bustle. I am not going to share with you which pattern I am using solely because I do not support this pattern company anymore. When I purchased this pattern and a few other patterns I will be using on this gown, I obviously did and now I have chosen not to support them for things that they have said that don't align with my beliefs. With that being said, I'm just going to tell you the garment that I'm making is called a petty bustle. You can Google that and find your own pattern. With that being said, let's just dive right into this garment. I am also making this in black, even though the reference is in white. I just still wanna stick with my all black undergarments because it is quite fun. Let's get going. I'm using a cotton broadcloth that I bought from the quilting section at Joanne. I think I used six yards of 42 inch wide fabric. The first step was to mark the boning placement with my pattern transfer paper and tool. Then I stitched the back panel up, kind of like a dart. The opening of this garment is at the front, so I don't have to worry about adding a slit here. Now following the boning channel markings, I am going to pin my boning channel tape to my piece. Then I'm going to stitch on each side of the tape, leaving room in the middle for my boning. For the boning, I'm using a material called hooping wire. It's basically two pieces of metal wrapped in plastic. This is the strongest hooping material I've ever worked with, and I don't use anything else now. I cut it with wire cutters and I cap it with duct tape. Then I feed it into the channel tape and I sew it shut before attaching this piece to the next panel pieces. I will also add 18 inch long pieces of twill tape at each boning channel that will be tied together in the back to draw the hoop into the structure we're going for. This is kind of like how I do them for my penier. Following the pattern instructions, I then seamed the front top panels together, leaving the opening at the top. Pressed that seam open, including pressing the top slit open, so I could stitch that down for a nice and clean finish. Now for the bottom ruffle. I stitched the pieces together and pressed their seams open. I should mention that I overlocked all of my raw edges prior to all of this. If you don't have access to an overlock machine, I recommend using a flat filed seam or French seams for a nice clean finish. 
The pattern calls for a one and a half inch hem. So I'm marking three inches from the bottom, then I can fold the bottom of the fabric to meet with this marking. Press that so it's nice and crisp, and then from there I can pin it and stitch it down. Now I'm going to gather it down with my handy dandy ruffle foot. Then I can pin it to the top half of the garment, making sure that everything fits well and lines up properly, and then sew it down. Now to make our little waterfall of ruffles. I'm going to seam together the panels for the base that all my ruffles will get attached to. Then I'm going to fold over the edge and stitch it down so that it is fully finished and clean. For the ruffles, I'm sewing together long strips of fabric with the longest strip at the bottom and the shortest strip at the top. I press those seams open, then I can add my horsehair braid to the hem of my ruffle. To do this, I'm going to pin half of an inch horsehair braid to the right side of the ruffle, sew that down, then fold and press the horsehair braid away from the ruffle and again to the wrong side of the ruffle. Then I can sew the horsehair braid to the wrong side of the ruffle. Using my ruffle foot, I ruffle down the top part of the ruffle, pin it onto the base that I previously made following the markings for each ruffle placement, and then stitch each ruffle down. I stitched the base to the hoop structure, threw on the second waistband of this project, and now I have a finished petty bustle. Finally, we get to work on the parts of the costume that will actually be seen. I'm still working from the closest to my body outward, so that means that I'll be working on the pleated underskirt. Once again, I'm using a pattern from a company that I no longer support. However, I will say that I changed about 75% of this pattern, so I'm not even sure that it's worthwhile mentioning what pattern I used, but let's start with the mock-up thing that I made and we can go from there. Okay, so I am trying to mock up the pleated skirt. Basically what I mean by mock up is I want to have a cotton, that's my, my red cotton, I wanna have a cotton version of the each piece so that when I go to pleat my fabric, I can pleat it in a way that works with the cotton. This is a no, however, I do wanna talk really quickly. I did use a pattern for all of this and then I lengthened parts of the pattern. This is definitely a no, I'll tell you what I don't wanna use. Those pleats at the top, I think that instead of doing those pleats at the top, I could just make this kind of like whatever these pieces are gonna be more of a trapezoid than they are a rectangle. So, trapezoid, trapezoid, we're going for trapezoids. So I'm going to take this back piece here. I like it, but I don't love it. I'm going to make it smaller at the top. Wow, wow. I'm gonna make it smaller at the top and get rid of those pleats because I think it's unnecessary and it's already gonna be a pleated skirt, which means that it's going to already have some bulk. So if I try to pleat pleated fabric, that doesn't sound great. Okay, so that top piece is gonna be smaller at the back and then down here, it's gonna get much wider. We want a really nice circle and this is not giving. So wider at the bottom, take out the pleats and make the top smaller. And then there's this side gore or this side panel that's gonna have the exact same. It's gonna stay, actually, I like that dart at the top. I think it's really nice. It's gonna stay small and darted at the top, but I need it to get much wider at this bottom, <laughs> much wider at this bottom. And then I also need to bring it out longer to match this. I actually think this length is good if it gets wider. Obviously that will all get filled in. And then the front panel is perfect. So I'm not, I'm just gonna take apart the, the whole thing and we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna change the side and back panel, but the front panel will stay the same. Basically complete overhaul of this pattern I used. So whatever. And I think for the next rendition, instead of going all the way around, I'm just gonna do half so that I don't waste as much fabric because I already realized I'm wasting a ton of fabric doing this. So it'll probably just be one half of a skirt versus um, a full skirt. So we'll check back in once I've made those adjustments and then we can actually start cutting or start pleating our real fabric. All right, I just made a very interesting realization. And that realization is if I were to say, make this piece into a pleated piece, that the pleats, uh, like if I followed the grain line and stuff, wouldn't match up at this seam. 
here's where we're at. These pieces are now, and, and that one there. Okay, these are basically gonna be like the baseline and I'm going to have to do full rectangles or re like of pleated pieces of fabric, not cut them, pleat the waistband, the top part, this part down, kind of like when we saw it up on the, the thing pleat this down so that you can't really tell what's going on at the top, which is actually fine because you have that overskirt that hides almost everything at the top. And when we get to the weird side asymmetrical part, that's when we will actually see like, where can you see the pleats? How high can they go up? Here's the thought process. This is kind of the guide for where all the pleats go, like at the bottom and how they look. But I am still gonna actually make the pleats in rectangles that are larger than this. And then also like I'll hem the hem to make that look good. And then also like pleat down everything up at the top to a waistband. Does that make sense? I hope it does when I actually show you. But anyway, I just made this realization. I'm about to cut this piece and see how it looks and get like one half of this done and see how it looks. I love this so much. I think it's so beautiful. I think it's gonna be absolutely stunning and I. I just started getting a little emotional just thinking ab about it and like about how much I love it. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut some of this fabric here. I'm gonna find some, maybe a scraps like in the corner there or something. I'm gonna cut like a, I don't know, a 10 inch long by, maybe I should do 20 inches long. I'm gonna cut a sample and I'll let you know how, what the sample size was. And then I'm gonna try a pleating method, like a, a pleating ratio that I think will look the best without also using the most fabric. I have an idea, but that's what we're gonna do. And when I'm done with that, I'll get back to you about what ratio it was, what it started at and what it pleated down to if that makes sense. So I guess I'm gonna start with pleats. Let's do this. This is my sample. It started at 20 inches. It is at 10 and a half inches right now. And I did one and a half inch, basically like every one and a half inches, I marked my, my fabric. And so then I pleated, like this is only, I think three quarters of an inch on each side to get to this. I think it looks good. I'm not, um, I think it looks good. I was second guessing it for a minute because I have my image up right here. If you can see my computer. And I was second guessing it, but I think I'm good. I think it's good. But now I'm wondering if it's an inch and a half an inch. I'm gonna make another sample. Okay, so this top one is one and a half inches. This bottom one is one inch. I think I'm gonna go with this top one. So this is what we're going for. The next step is going to be, I'm gonna start at the front piece because I think that's the smallest. And I'm basically going to get the measurements, double them because I know that this shrinks down 50%. Get the measurements, double them, cut my fabric and then mark the pleats and maybe even get that front piece pleated today. And uh, we'll go from there. It's about 5.30, so I should probably end around seven. I was what I was thinking. So I think an hour and a half is enough to do that, but um, we'll find out. To pleat my fabric down, I cut fabric in the length of my pattern piece and then double the width of the pattern piece. Later, I realized I need to overlock the edges of my fabric, but I didn't do that for this piece that you see on screen. I do that later. Then I use my ruler to mark one and a half inches all the way across my fabric. From there, I will fold every other space and pin it, but I pin it every eight inches down the length of the pleat. This eight inch mark acts as like a marker so that when I go to hand tack these later, I know that that's exactly where I'm gonna be hand tacking it. Once the entire piece is pleated and hand tacked, I can then place my pattern piece on my pleated fabric and start to pleat the top of the fabric so it fits into the width of the top, but also stays at the width of the bottom. Then I sew that down at the top and I put it on my dress form to bask in the glory of all my hard work. Okay, the first piece is done and it is so terribly beautiful. I am obsessed with it. I'm basically gonna repeat this whole process um, three more times on lar like significantly larger pieces. So instead of showing all of those steps over again, I will like show the finished pieces and then the next like step you'll see is me actually sewing all of these pieces together and hemming them. So yeah, she's coming along. Why yes, I am storing my fabric on the ground because why not? We have a problem. This is our problem. 
I think my solution, first up there, we're gonna just pleat all of that down up there. And then I'm gonna hand baste like this whole thing here. And then I'm gonna trim this off. And then I'm gonna press it flat, remark it and piece it here because piecing is period, but also I don't really have like any other solution. Um, also though, like I'll be really, really real. If I do this whole corner here well, I really hope you guys can't hear Toby in the background. <sighs> okay, if I do this right and like do this all nice and stuff, I could just take this off, machine stitch this top one, and then like I'll have these tacks, right? And then just like flip it and sew it to this here. And then like kind of repeat that. And I'm gonna have to do it on the other side too because I already cut that fabric. And I just bought six more yards of fabric, cost me $200. I don't wanna buy more fabric. I don't wanna cut more pieces. So what we're gonna do is what I just explained. We're gonna do it again on that piece. Piecing is period, it's fine. And then when we go to cut the fabric for the next piece, I'm just gonna remeasure things so that if I have anything like this situation, it doesn't happen again. But to solve this or to, to explain how I'm gonna do this in general, I was gonna do a little video, but I'm just gonna tell you now. I'm gonna fold this up a little and just hand baste all of this. This will all get taken out once I do the hem, but the hand basting will just keep these pleats in place for now. That's the plan. So go team red dress. That plan didn't work. So instead, I added a 10 inch wide strip to the pleated fabric, I pleated it down, and then I did my hem just like I said I was going to. It actually was really clean and you couldn't even tell that I didn't have enough fabric in the first place. I did a really good job at hiding all of the seams in this gown in pleats. And also for the back panel, I ended up having to do something similar where I stitched together several panels of fabric to create the 118 inch wide piece of fabric that I then pleated down. So yeah, that's how I did that. Welcome to my downstairs where there is an Eva and a big red dress that I am about to pleat, pleat. I've already done all that work. I'm going to do the hem. If you can see here, there is a hem. I'm going to sew that by hand. It is going to take me more than just tonight, but I'm going to try to get like 50% done tonight and then wake up damn early in the morning and get right back to it so that I can have a hem finished tomorrow like at lunch and then like get some content made with it and then I'm also gonna start the skirt that covers up most of this it's my least favorite thing to say while also being one of my favorite things to say all right so that is all hopefully I will get some hand sewing footage but don't count on it the lighting is bad I am tired. It is past 8 o'clock. I have been sewing since 9 a.m. Talk to you soon. All right, so the pleated skirt is complete, which is great. It took five days. I thought it would only take two. It's fine, we're here. Now I have to do the overskirts and, or the overskirt, which is kind of your apron, asymmetrical apron style front with this like, I think they call it a butterfly bustle. I'm not 100% sure. I don't really know terminology for the bustle era as well, but if you do know, the terms for this style bustle. I'll, I'll put my two reference photos up here, but I don't have a ton of photos of the front. So like this black and white one is really all I have. So we're kind of working with what we got. And then there's that really pretty details. Um, I'm calling them 
like petals, like flower petal details along the back side of it. And I'm gonna actually save that portion for next week. I'm gonna do all of the petals in one batch next week. I basically wanna get the largest pieces of fabric cut, draped, basically sewn up and ready to go. And then all of those like extra details I'll do with like, the scraps. That way I don't like cut into fabric and then realize, oh shit, I don't have enough fabric. I'm gonna do all of this in, um, I have a, a pattern for my stash that is from a company that I don't support, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me say this 500 times. I'm gonna use that as a base, just like I did with the pleated skirt. And then I'm gonna modify from there. Uh, with the pleated skirt, I basically threw out that whole pattern. So it, it might not work. This might not be the pattern I use, we will see. But I'm gonna start with the front. And then from the front, I'm gonna work towards the back. So I'm gonna try to get this like apron style front looking good uh, in my cotton. And then I will do cotton on the back and then combine the two. I think what I can do is if I get it perfect in cotton, I can just flatline the cotton to the taffeta, which will give it a little bit more body. And then like, there we go. So uh, let's give this a shot and see where, see how, how it goes. Yay! I um, have seven full days to finish this costume. I have a photo shoot on the 14th at a really beautiful location. I'm gonna do some content creation with a friend, but that means I have seven full days and then a half day on Monday to bust this out. So let's go, let's do it. So here's where I'm at. The first thing I did was basically pleat down this top. I basically found a pleating piece of like other pattern piece and then <laughs> marked that dimension or whatever, like four and a half inches to a half an inch, four and a half, yada, yada. So that's how I did the top. So on the side, I just repeated this pleating pattern, but here, and this side is curved while this side um, is straight, which is where we get these lovely poofs. So that's kind of how it all laid. And then the only other thing I did was play around with this pleat right there, which I had to remark. I didn't, I remarked things on one side, but not the other, so that I'll just mirror it. And then I just took this right here, pinned the fabric there. I need to mark that next. And then I did one right below it. So if you see here. Now, this is not fully accurate. Um, I think she has like a third one down here. Something that we need to discuss is that I only have seven and a half yards of fabric left, plus scraps. That is cutting it close. I believe this skirt here is four yards and the one in the half, the one in the front is a yard and a half. So I'm kind of like at a point where I'm not sure what, how much more I can do. You know what I mean? So also I kind of pulled this. Let me just do something real quick. Okay. So this right here actually needs to be a point. So what I did was I marked on this side, and these are supposed to be a lot higher up. I marked 18 inches from there to there. I kind of eyeballed it. I don't know that that's what it is, but what I'm gonna do is when I take it off and I lay it flat before ripping out all of the seams, I'm going to kind of create a line that goes from there to this point. Um, because also in my image, it doesn't have as much fabric right over here. Um, so that's where we're going with this. It is not perfect. It is not screen accurate, but I think it's going to look good. And I think ultimately what's really going to be the showstopper besides the pleats is there's this strap on the back of it that starts on the side bodice here. And it basically connects from here and it goes around and it drapes right down here. It's basically this like ruched piece with all of the little, um, I'm calling them petals, like flower petals. I don't know the technical term. That piece is the showstopper. That piece being on this with these pleats and the per the sleeve, that's really what's gonna sell this. So we're not gonna stress too much about the bustle being the perfect bustle. <sighs> it's time to mark, take things out. Sorry that you can hear the dogs. Cut and flatline my silk. Sweet. Okay, I don't know that I'm gonna do this, but I'm just gonna mark this anyway. This is the third little uh, bustle. And then I would have to add 18 inches to that to make it fill out to like this area, this middle, this area. Um, so I'm gonna mark it 
and I'm gonna save this video. If I don't end up using it, I will. But it, basically if math works, then we will. I don't actually like the way that looks, to be really honest. I might like it if there was the longer, skinnier part in the middle, but I'm not loving that. I'm still gonna mark it, add 18 inches, make it a triangle to that, and then everything here will drape and fall over itself versus creating this little like swoop de doo Instead of a swoop de doo here, it would basically just pleat, like fall over itself and that would look better. But anyway, I did it for my own sanity. Here we are. After seam ripping the pleats in the front apron piece, I pressed my fabric and then laid it directly onto my silk taffeta to cut out the identical piece of fabric. From there, I pressed my taffeta piece, pinned the two pieces together, and then basted each side together before overlocking all of the edges. Now that my cotton and my silk taffeta are working together as one piece, I can press the hem and side seam and hand stitch it down, making sure my stitches are invisible from the front of the fabric. Following my pleating marks, I can pleat down my fabric on the side and at the top. So, I just realized that I attached the lining, the flat lining portion, to um, not the wrong side of the fabric, but basically the way I constructed it means that the asymmetrical portion will be on the wrong side of the dress because neither of these fabrics have a right or wrong side. So I have to undo all of the work that I just did, which is um, not my favorite thing. So I'm going to undo all of that. Uh, this sets me back several hours, like a lot of hours. So I'm gonna do all that and then check in with you. I'm not gonna show you me undoing this and re-switching it. I'm just gonna do it. I'll show you how it looks right now and the mistake and then I'll flip it and reverse it. So this is where I'm at. I have, including today, six and a half days to finish this dress. For the back panel, I needed to mark the new hemline by drawing a line from the pointed center back to the 18 inch mark on the side of the pattern. Then I also needed to remark my pleat placement. Then I used my hook snips to seam rip the three panels together and I repeated the flat lining and hemming process that I did on the front of the apron, but for the back now. For the back bustles, I just pinned the fabric together at the two markings and then tacked it in place by hand. I also stitched the front to the back at the shorter side. Then it was time to add the final waistband of this project. To do this, I measured the length of these two pieces together, added one inch to that, and then cut a piece of fabric the length by three inches wide. Then I applied it the usual way. This garment ended up getting two hook and bars because there was about a four inch overlap on the waistband, but I think that that overlap actually helped add to the aesthetic of this piece. All right, let's make a bodice. I will be using this Butterick B6572 pattern. I'm just gonna use the bodice and I'm gonna be heavily modifying it. I have a couple photos up on my computer so that I can see. And essentially, I'm just gonna knock out a base of what I think this should be, like what this should turn into. And then from there, I'll make a mock-up and fit it over my corset. I have to make some adjustments to the sleeves. The top half of the sleeve, or like the majority of this sleeve is perfect. I just have to add her little like bat wings onto the sleeves. And then the neckline 
is a good start. It needs to be much lower. The length of the, the top is like okay. I might have to lengthen it a little bit in some areas. And then the other big adjustment is gonna be having it have like the crossover and making sure I do the crossover on the correct side because we all know with the skirt, I started with the asymmetry on the wrong side. This is just brains are weird. Mine is, is very weird. I think this is gonna go together pretty quickly, at least like getting the fit and everything. And then if I, I think tomorrow will be a lot of the detail and finishings and stuff. I'm not gonna add any structure to this. So it's literally just gonna be taffeta and lining. I don't think I need much more. And actually, I'm just gonna be real, real with you. I'm probably only gonna flatline the taffeta and not add a lining and then serge all the edges because that just makes the most sense to me for both speed as well as uh, structurally. I think that makes sense. So I'm gonna dive right in and cut my pattern pieces out and start uh, putting them on a cotton that I can use as like a mock-up. Not my red cotton. We'll pick something from my stash and go from there. All right, to start out, I might have made this more difficult than it had to be, but we're already here. I'm already doing it. So let me explain to you what my plan of attack is. First, this is the bodice front lining piece, whatever. This looks like a great bodice jumping off point. So I'm going to start with the front of the bodice with this piece here. And then I was looking at images and it looks like she doesn't have any seams except for like the crossover for the back. This pattern construction has three pieces, but the one for Mina actually doesn't have any seams, which means each back seam or each back like piece is one piece. So we'll work on getting these to be one piece. Then I can take these two um, sleeve patterns and turn them into the Mina sleeve pattern. Basically, a lot of Frankensteining. I again, it might have been smarter for me to just start at scratch, but I've been struggling so much with patterning anything on this dress form because of the, the boobs. And so this feels more comfy for me. We'll see how I feel in an hour when I have a mock up or like fake pattern pieces or whatever, so. Oh, and then this fabric obviously is what I'm gonna use for mock ups, but first I'm gonna transfer this piece onto paper. The reason I'm doing that is because I actually don't want to cut this pattern piece up. I really like this pattern here. I kept it for a reason. So I'm basically just going to transfer this onto paper and then start um, cutting it up and playing with it. And yes, I will be using a lot of paper in this process. That's just part of the process. A lot of paper, a lot of fabric. That's, that's where we're at. Okay, I have a like front situation going on and a back situation going on. This is, yeah, so these are the pieces. I haven't decided if I wanted to make this like the full piece that goes all the way down to the waist or if I just wanna make these pieces like dicky style where they kind of just tuck in and end like in here and then like whatever. I do know that this is where my closures are gonna go so I have to add a little bit here but we're gonna make a mock up um, and then same with this one. Like, I don't know if I want to make this go all the way down. I don't like the idea of making that many darts. I feel like it'll um, actually add a lot of bulk to this area. So I think at least for the front, for sure, it's going to be like this. The back might change a little because of the closures, but now I'm going to cut all four of these out onto my cotton here and sew up a mock-up and like do the whole mock-up phase. So that's what we're gonna do. I also do have the sleeve here, but I don't wanna do, like I don't wanna cut this and start draping this pattern or like readjusting this pattern until I have all of this perfect because I basically need to line this up, um, like the dots and all that jazz with the holes, the armholes on these. And I think it's just gonna be easier to do that once all of this over here is going doing its thing so that is the plan and I will uh, I'll talk to you in a second when I have a mock-up that was quite possibly one of the more complicated mock-up uh, scenarios that I've been in and I did not get footage I got one itty bitty clip for Instagram that was it cool I love this for me it, it's just a really like difficult garment to get in and out of and I realized in the process of taking in the mock-up that I need to rethink the entire closure process so I thought that there was a zipper in the back I'm not convinced that that's the only way they got in it like I feel like the zipper would have had to go down the back and this side um, and I don't want to use a zipper anyway so the 
two major adjustments that I'm gonna make are the back panel that is like the smaller panel or like the underneath panel. It is the right, the back right panel is going to be a longer panel. It's not gonna just be a half panel. The front one, it looks fine as a half panel. We're gonna keep that because all those extra darts would add quite a bit of bulk. We don't need that. And also it would be awkward if there was extra bulk on one side and not the other. So that is gonna be fine. Um, but on the back, I am gonna make the half piece or the like right side piece that's get overlapped. That's gonna be a full piece that goes all the way down. And I think the top piece is just gonna snap or hook. I, I kind of want to use hook and like hook and bar, like dress hooks. And I think it's basically gonna hook over to the right and on the side seam. That is, I think my plan, or at least some of the side seam, because essentially the waist is so small that it can't get over my shoulders, which is fine. But um, if I want it to be fitted, then, you know, whatever. There's also this weird like bubbling happening at, at the lower back area. And I'm just gonna be really honest I don't know how to fix it. I'm gonna try to hide it with the bustle and like the little sash piece that goes over. I just, I really don't know how to fix it. I have four more days. So I'm just not gonna be bothered about that bubbling area. It won't look perfectly fitted and that's fine. That's the choice that I'm making. So we're gonna move on from my little drawn up bit to ripping it apart and getting it transferred or not even transferred. I'm literally just going to very nicely rip it up. I am gonna have to take the one piece and make a whole new pattern piece out of it. But then I'm basically gonna just transfer it onto the red cotton that's the lining. I haven't even gotten around to the sleeve yet. I actually don't even want to touch the sleeves until I get the like the actual bodice piece like the lining together. Oh I guess I can't do the lining without flat lining. Oh this is what we're gonna do. Take this apart. I have more than enough cotton more than enough. I can go back to Joanne Fabrics if I really have to. Take this apart and transfer um, it onto cotton as the lining and do another semi mock-up with these new ideas that I have. And then once I've gotten that done, I will seam rip all of that apart and flatline it onto my silk and we will move on to the silk phase. So that's what the plan is. Hello friends. We have four days to finish this costume and I just wanna address something really quick cause you're gonna notice it here in fittings as well as when I work. I did take quite the tumble this morning when I ran. So I have bandages on my hands and my shoulder. I just wanna address that now. Did I know running was a contact sport when I signed up for it? No. Did I make contact with the cement this morning? Yes. Therefore now I am involved in a contact sport and we're just gonna have to deal with it. Just getting that out of the way before you see footage of my hands. I'm gonna try really hard not to get Neosporin or blood on the silk. Whew, this is gonna be a long couple of days, but let's get into finishing this lining mock-up thing that I'm making. Basically, I have my red pieces cut. I'd love these to be the interlining of the garment, but I wanted to do one more mock-up with them to make sure that they fit me and then I can fit the sleeve to them, rip it all apart, redo it all in silk, flatline it, put it together, and we can be on to details. That's the plan. All right, let's go. All right, we are at this phase where I am doing a fitting and I'm miserable because I don't have help to properly close this in the back, so I can't properly fit it. I have four days and I'm just going to make the executive decision that it fits. If it looks bad in the back, then I will hide it with my hair, I guess. I don't know. There are so many issues with it. Um, the biggest being bunching down here. The second biggest being just the overall sleeve. I can't tell if this fits and if there's gonna be gaping up here because I can't actually get it to properly close in the back because hi, I cannot reach back there. So these are issues that kind of suck and that could make this look really ugly, but you know what? We have to move forward. I have to have something to photograph. Glee Silk Baron probably isn't gonna stop selling this fabric anytime soon. So if the worst case is that I have to remake the bodice because I don't have a proper way to fit it, then that's that's what we do. We know how I am on this channel where I don't remake things. We also know that I don't wear things if I don't love them. So we're just gonna see how this goes because I am out of ideas and I am out of ways to make this work. We're gonna trust the process we're gonna move forward. The one major adjustment I will be doing here in just a minute is uh, if you can't tell here, this 
this armpit, this arm goes like way into my armpit. So I need to change this just a little, like bring it down. Sorry that um, this turned into the having fit issues with Casey channel, but that's reality. If I had a dress form that looked more like my body, this wouldn't be a problem, but I don't. I'm going to move on to the sleeves. We're gonna move on to the sleeves. And then hopefully once I get a, a decent-ish sleeve, I can take everything apart, press it, get it onto taffeta, flatline it, and go to town. That's that. I have a sleeve pattern and I like it. So because I just really wanna ride this win all the way through, we're gonna start with the sleeves. I am going to take my little sleeve pattern apart. I'm going to cut it out on cotton and silk. And while I'm gonna be flatlining the rest of the bodice, for the sleeve in particular, I'm actually going to bag line it. I'll explain that when I do it. The first thing I need to do is basically take my sleeve apart and cut it out on taffeta and cotton. So let's get into that and then we'll start sewing this entire thing up. How does that sound? I think that sounds great. I'm so excited. I have a win. This is my win. I have a win. Yay! I started by taking apart my mock-up and transferring it to the red cotton and the silk taffeta twice. Once I have my four pieces cut out, I pin them together, but it's really important that I have a piece of fabric for each sleeve. So the way I fold my sleeve pieces is extremely important. Then I can sew all four pieces. Using my pressing ham, I do my best to press the seams of my sleeves. It's probably time that I invest in a sleeve board, so if you have any recommendations, please link them below. Now, to bag line my sleeve. I'm going to place one of the silk taffeta sleeves inside a cotton sleeve with the right sides together, making sure that they line up properly at the sleeve's eye. Then I will pin the bottom of the sleeve, sew it, and flip the sleeve so that the taffeta side is right side out. And I can press the bottom of the sleeve to make sure that my bat wings are nice and crisp. Finally, I sew the lining to the taffeta at the top and overlock that edge. Now I can hand stitch the little pleats that are on the inside of the elbow and my sleeves are done. Now that my sleeves are done, we can move those out of the way and rip apart this. Basically, I am going to rip apart this red piece. This is going to be the interlining. I'm gonna completely deconstruct it and then cut this, all these pieces out again on taffeta. And from there, we're gonna reassemble it. Wish me luck, friends. Taking apart the darts on this fabric was probably the trickiest part, but I took apart my pieces, transferred them to silk taffeta, making sure that I was doing it the correct way. We don't want any more repeat of before. And then I flatlined my pieces. And from there, I overlocked around the edge of every single piece so that I would have a nice clean finish on each piece. I knew that I wanted to hand sew the neckline because it lays better. So I marked an inch away from the top of each piece, folded it to meet that marking, and then I hand stitched it down, making sure my stitches were invisible from the front. All right, so I have stitched the, like hand stitched the neckline down. So you can see there's like no stitching on the top. I know this is all gonna get covered by the petals, but I did it because it's important to me. And then this is the front piece. And since it has this like, here, I'll show you. Since it like overlays like this, I machine stitched this and like all of this down just to like the halfway point. And then once again, for invisibility, but also like, I didn't want any weird wonkiness. I just hand stitched this entire front down. Now it all like basically makes one piece and this is all the front. For the back, this is where my closures go. So the first thing I did was just hand tack this down up here. After of course, hand stitching these bits, again, I know they're gonna get covered in little petals, but it doesn't matter. I really, I think it looks clean. I think it looks better. I even did the side. So this is gonna get, like this right here is gonna get like hooks and bars as long as well as like up this way. And then obviously the, like on that, that's how we're gonna get in and out of it. But because I need like basically this whole flap to be able to come open, um, I've just marked where I want it to line and that's gonna help me with like placing basically my closures because I can't really have somebody do like a fitting on me of it. So I have to like 
I'm gonna do a fitting, but like I have to like see, I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, that's to help me guide where my closure should go. And then I realized when I was working on this that this side was way longer. So I marked, like I moved this over and I marked it. I couldn't tell you why this was so long. And I'm gonna stitch the shoulders together and then the sides together right now. And I'm gonna stitch on this line or I'm gonna like line the top and bottom up to this line and sew it there. And then if it is like does need to be lengthened for whatever reason, I'll still have it. If it doesn't, then I'll just quickly surge over that and call it a day. But I just wanted to explain that because I don't know where my head was at. I don't know what was going on there. Um, also like this looks skinnier than that. I don't know y'all, whatever. So now the step is to basically put these two halves together at the shoulders and the sides where they need to go. And then um, I am ready to do one last fitting before adding all of the uh, lovely petals. Okay, so I just did a fitting with my sleeves and oh my god, it looked so bad. So I need to move my sleeves basically up to this point here and there. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do is take the sleeves off, move the sleeve point or like, like cut, you know, whatever. We're gonna just, we're gonna mark it on the inside and then serge it and sew them back on and hopefully that'll solve that problem. We know that when you remove fabric, it's a lot harder to fix things because you, you don't have anywhere to go. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. And then, oh, also I had to make a really weird executive decision. I know this isn't like quote unquote finished, but I'm gonna actually just lay all of the details on top of this versus folding it under because the length is actually gonna get too short if I fold it under. So we're just gonna hide our, um, edge here with the petals. And then on the back, you don't see the petals. We're gonna get into that when we make this, the sway, the swash, the swag, whatever people are calling it, doesn't matter. We'll talk about the back later, but the first thing that I need to do is fix these sleeves, do another fitting, and then maybe then I will start getting on the details. <laughs> We're getting close. We are, we're getting there. Okay, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna turn all these scraps into all the little petals on her gown. Like we're gonna start with the bodice and then we'll do the little swag. But here we go. This is why I've been saving all of these pieces. Let's do this. To make the petals, I had to start with a general size. I started with something that was two inches tall and one inch wide. Then I needed to add seam allowance. I chose half an inch for this because it's just the easiest for me to work with. I did basically sketch this out on paper and then once I had a size I liked, I cut two pieces of cotton out, stitched them together, right sides together, turned them right side out, pressed them flat, folded the bottom edge under to stitch it down and then I had my petal. Now to make 259 more in a variety of sizes for both the bodice and the swag. All right, today is the last day I have to work on Mina before my photo shoot. Where I'm at, I need to make the swag. I'm calling it a swag. Don't know what else to call it. A lot of people have suggested calling it that. It's not what I would have considered a swag to be, but hey, other people say it is. I'm just gonna listen to them. If it is something else, please let me know what it's called in the comments below. Now, I'm gonna make this swag. Uh, it's basically like a ruffled swag with a bunch of the like petals on the side and they get a little bit larger uh, like once they get to the drapey bit. So I have to make all the petals for that. I have to make it. I have the strips cut out and then assemble. I also need to add closures to the bodice, but I want to do the closures and also how this gets attached to the bodice and the skirt at the same time, if that makes any sense. So I'll be doing an entire fitting once the sag is sag. <laughs> I'll be doing an entire fitting once the swag is finished and that fitting will be to mark closure placement and then put this on. There's one part of the bodice right now on my dress form that just looks really ugly to me, but I think the swag placement, like if I properly place it, I think it'll actually hide 
hide that. So we're banking on that. And then if I get all of that done and I have like two, maybe three hours left before midnight, midnight is my cutoff. Like at midnight, I turn into a pumpkin. There is no more working on this. But if I have, if I finish that around nine, 10 o'clock, I'm actually gonna spend some time hand tacking all of the tips of each and every petal down to the bodice because while they lay nice at certain angles, they do pop up a tiny bit. And I don't know, that looks more like spikes to me. I know it's because they use like a fabric folding technique and I made actual petals. I just didn't have time to learn a new technique and my brain solved the problem in this way. So that's where we're at. With all of that, if, the, if, if, if the swag gets done, the fitting is great. I can hand tack all of those down. And then that means tomorrow I can style the wig. The wig styling is so minimal. Like I'm not joking. It's really just gonna be like a half pony with a little bit of bang in front. And maybe I'll add a little bit of a curl near the bottom. Not like a curl, but like a wavy, just like volume, like volume type texture to it, to give it some body. But to be really honest, I could, the wig is not something I'm worried about. Like I, I can, probably get that in done in under an hour. So let's get started. I'm gonna take the camera and show you what I got and what my ideas are. And then we're just gonna go to town and I'm gonna just like start making petal after petal. I might not show all of the processes of making the petals cause I've shown one and I don't really think it makes sense to like repeat that a million more times. Okay friends, so this is the first strip and it is like a little over 50 inches long. And then this is the second strip, also a little over 50 inches long. What I'm gonna do is sew these two together and I'm going to actually um, surge or overlock each edge and then I will ruffle them down. And once they've been ruffled down, it is, or gathered, I think I'm gonna hand gather them actually. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. But once they're gathered down, I can basically start doing the petals. Um, so basically this part up here is gonna get attached to the bodice and it's literally gonna fit in right there. So I know that doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Also, if you can see, this is the part of the bodice that I was saying I hate. It rumples up here, but when I do a fitting on my body, we're gonna figure out like what that all looks like. And this swag is gonna come around here and essentially hide it. Also, yes, that is some kind of blood or something from my wounds. I think I got one on my shoulder too from a fitting. Uh, this is why I stopped doing fittings is because uh, I just couldn't keep the bandages on my hands um, from falling off and that's <laughs> that's what happened so luckily this one will be hidden I'm not gonna show you where the other one is because maybe I can hide it for as long as possible but this is where we're at she's really pretty these are all gonna get tacked down I should have done it while I was doing the like attaching them but who cares we're here we're doing the thing anyway that's where I'm at awesome Unfortunately, due to my time restraint, I didn't get any footage of me making these larger petals or attaching them to the sash or really any footage of all of the attachments and how this costume comes together. But I think it's time for the reveal of Mina's red dress from Bram Stoker's Dracula.
Now that this costume is done, I just wanted to share a few of my thoughts on this project. First, I did not end up having time to tack down the tips of the petals. So in this footage of the reveal, they were not tacked down. I did my best to like brush them into submission, but I will need to tack them down at some point in the future. The bodice still has some major fit issues. Everything from like the back of the neckline, the V neckline, it's just not nearly as low as it's supposed to be. The shoulders have like this weird gaping. In general, this bodice just doesn't really fit me very well and it's pretty discouraging, but I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I also wish that I had enough silk taffeta to line the sleeves with the silk taffeta as well because the two colors of red just don't work well together. I did what I could with the time and the materials I had, so we're gonna roll with it. Now with that being said, I'm actually not certain that silk taffeta was the best material for this project to begin with. I think that a silk satin would have been a much better choice, specifically in the draping of the skirt and some of the bodice areas. It just felt a little bit too stiff and papery. While silk taffeta is great to make pleats with, it just isn't the best, I think, for this project. With that being said, I still love the fabric that I used. Like, let's be real. I love this taffeta so much. It's such a beautiful color. It's striking. It's everything I wanted it to be. So even though it wasn't the best choice for this project, I still love the fabric and the choice that I made. I'll be honest, I really love this costume and I hope y'all do too. I need to give a huge thank you and shout out to my friend, Sailor Cost Mads. She put together the locations for this shoot. She kind of organized the whole day for us. She did so much work to be able to have these beautiful photos and videos for this video. So please go give her a follow on Instagram. Check out her work. She's super creative. Thank you, Maddie, so much for making this entire beautiful reveal a possibility. Finally, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and say, hey, boo, hey, down in the comments below. Tell me what you're going to be dressed as for Halloween. And until next time, stay spooky.